are in Aix-en-Provence during the period of the Lyrical Festival, which is a very important festival in opera, lyrical music, because the modernity proposed how they reconstitute the, the repertory in a new way, in a modern way, and, and also a space of creation for new operas. In fact, it's a little bit our home, because the Medina session started here in Aix. Each Medina session is the same process. Young people are invited, very talented young people. They have the courage to come back here and to share this collective experience and to compose together. We have always the same duality. The north part of the Mediterranean, they are used with harmonies and the, what we call the equal temperament. A system which divides the octave in 12. This invention in the Western world could create the harmony and the modulation into harmony, then we could play in 12 different keys. Everybody knows that. In the south of Mediterranean, mainly, the music is modal and use the non-equal temperament with the system of Makam. Then we have always these both sides. One side with equal temperament, one side with non-equal temperament. We have a specific instrument from one side, specific instrument for the other side. They have different vocabularies, the musicians are together, and they are confronted with this problem. I ask a few of these musicians to just give us an example of the frequencies they used in the music to touch the emotions. Nadeh Mahmoud, je joue du oud de Tunis. Là, ce que je viens de jouer, c'est un mode tunisien qui s'appelle Sika Tonseya. Et ça a comme spécificité le fait de jouer des notes qui bougent beaucoup. C'est comme le mi, c'est entre mi bécart et un mi demi bémol, mais pas comme le mi demi bémol oriental. Et il y a toujours les, les intervalles de quinte avec un si bécart et un la la demi bémol mais haut. On reste beaucoup sur le si bécar avec un, un la dièse. Ça c'est un la demi bémol mais très haut vraiment. Et avec des accents. Là c'est avec un si bémol. Uh, a friend of mine said to me a long time ago, you know, Fabrizio, the, the makam is a little bit like the bread. In uh, Morocco, the, the bread is a little bit thicker. And when you go to Syria, it's more thin. Vibrations, the frequencies, the micro intervality, the makam, in fact, is a little bit the same. I really like this, this image. That's why I asked them to just to play a little bit to show difference, to try to understand that there, there is a difference. I'm Elif. Uh, I will exp I will tell you about the uh, makam sabah. We called it sabah. And okay, I will play. When I play the one, two, three, four, fourth uh, thing, uh, it's a bit higher than the other sabah, I think. Because uh, when I he heard the other sabah from the other countries, they are playing like that. We are playing not A, not also uh, A flat.
So in, in Greece we have many influences from the music of Turkey. The violinists normally, they, they were trying to uh, imitate the sound of Kemenche, the Politiki Lira, we say. Uh, so all the, the ornaments and the, the way that we use the makam uh, is exactly from, from this side. The way to, to give power to a note uh, is uh, based in the makams and in, in this way of musical thinking. So for example, even if uh, one note is not so important for the makam, is not a, a basic note, we can give uh, in this note a power and we can move all the other notes around, even if they are really basic, like I did here. And my bass here is La, but I wanted to give a power in C. So I moved La to to express this feeling, so I did. And when I wanted to go back to La to finish my phrase, I, I changed the position of C to, to, make my, to make the people understand that now it's, uh, the phrase is ending and we are going back, so we finish the cycle. In this project, it's not why you harp, it's why you harpist. You know, Otavia, she's a wonderful harpist. She, she plays jazz, she improvises with the harp, which is very complex to do because the harp is not only strings as you used to see, it's pedals. And the system of pedals with the feet uh, to change the possibility of harmonies is, is really complex. In the harmonization of Makam, first step was to retune the harp. Not the whole harp, of course. We start with few notes, the E half flat and the B half flat, which are not supposed to be tuned like that with the harp. The harp is, is tuned like a piano, let's say like this. Then it's to introduce few notes, a uh, few vibrations in the middle, which could make the link for harp instruments. So, uh, so la, si, still more up. Can you play uh, just a, just the notes around it? Yeah, I think it's it's just a bit on the high side still. That works. Now play the scale. Just but just play the whole scale because it's more important from from do to do. Here. Yeah. Overtones from the from the um, yeah, equal tempered notes. I'm not used to this timbre. I invite Amir El Safar to come here and to share his experience. It's probably the first taking face to face the problem of harmony and makam 
and he works on the harmonization of makam. The natural instinct is to want to tune the perfect fourth, but actually there's, there's a sweet spot when you settle in that you actually reach a different overtone series. It's not the same overtone. If you play E and A, then you're in the A overtone series. Mm -hmm. But if you play E half flat, you create a, another difference tone. I'll, I'll tell you what this in a second. <laughs> trumpet player, uh, composer, santur player, and singer. First of all, he has these both sides. A part of him is Iraqi, a part of him is American. He lives in New York, he was born in Chicago, he plays trumpet. The trumpet, when you are born in Chicago, means something. The history of blues, the history of jazz is very important. He plays in the symphonic orchestra of Chicago. When he was young, already with, under, under the direction of Pierre Boulez, he, he had these experiences. And uh, now we have these uh, three axes. Uh, these three axes, Western uh, classical music, the jazz, the makam, the Arabic music, Middle East music, uh, improvisation. Yes, also these two sides, what is orality and what is written music. <laughs> When I was around 24, 25 is when I went very deep into maqam. I went to Baghdad uh, just before the war and then I traveled throughout Aleppo and Cairo and uh, meeting Arabic musicians, especially uh, Iraqi musicians. And what's interesting about maqam Iraqi is it's kind of like the, it's in a way closer to the source of the, the earliest vibrations from maqam. And part of it is because Iraq has this ancient history going back to Sumeria and Babylon, and we have records of modal systems from Babylon that actually are the same as the Greek modal system. Um, partly because Baghdad was the capital of this incredible uh, Abbasid empire, the Islamic empire from the 8th to the 13th centuries, where musicians and scholars and thinkers and astronomers and poets and artists were all coming together and creating um, compiling knowledge and, and then being able to innovate and, and go steps further and further. And you find treatises from that era talking about the, the micro in intervals between, you know, it's not, a, there's no half tone or quarter tone, it's, it's frequencies based on Pythagorean frequencies and then going further and further again into the extensions. That's where you arrive at the maqam. Play yours uh, more broadly, longer, don't, don't, so it doesn't sync up with their time. Okay. And you can wait and but after they built it a little bit. Yeah, and you can, you 
What I observed in Maqam Iraqi was these sort of very fundamental uh, relationships between tones that are, I consider them to be archetypes. You can find where different musical traditions connect. At the same time, I was working with Cecil Taylor. In these years where I was studying Maqam, I was getting this injections of Cecil's world, which was coming from Duke Ellington and Thelonious Monk and Coltrane. And, and you know, this, there's a modality, but also this very jarring harmonic sense. And somehow, in my mind, there had to be a synthesis. that I started really figuring out how to extract harmonies. And the maqam already has its own functionality inside of the melody, but it's, it's happening on a micro level. So if you're singing one phrase, in that phrase, there's little tonicized, it's implicit, it's not explicit harmony. It's, it's happening underneath. And so my whole process has been really to discover what, what this is and illuminate it. All together. Looking for the harmony that's already present inside this melodic tradition. With maqam, where it's it really, really, it's it sits in your body, like, and so that's this this idea of tarab. It's a lot of components to tarab, which is like musical ecstasy in, in maqam music. But the tarab, it's like the groove in African music, where every time that cycle is repeated, or every time that frequency is repeated, it sort of goes deeper. You, you feel your body like getting uh, steeped in it more and more. I'm looking for the this, this space in between, where the melody can, can start in the middle and sneak somewhere else and end somewhere in the middle, so that it's... It sounds like the melody is floating on top, as if you were doing it spontaneously. For me, the most pure kind of maqam singing, we would call it singing, is, is the Quranic recitation. Usually the great scientists of maqam were, were Quran reciters. And there's no background, there's no um, uh, anything accompanying Qur'an. So it's always the, the sound begins in silence and ends in silence. 